Figured I would do something I haven't done in a while and it's uh, sort of like a day in the life vlog type thing. Unfortunately it's a from 2 p.m. onwards in the day of the life vlog type thing because I had a bunch of office stuff I had to deal with this morning. But there's all kinds of odds and ends we need to take care of today. Uh, this is the main thing over here. This is my New Holland 658 round baler. Uh, I bought this thing as a fixer upper machine. The tires on it are like completely destroyed. You can see I'm not pulling it home on those going down the road. So I took the tires off my good baler, put them on here while well, the whole wheel. And unfortunately we've gotten so much uh, rain, the ground is pretty much just like a uh, sponge consistency. And this thing fell off the, uh, the jack stand, which is under there. Oh my goodness. Yeah, when I lowered this machine onto that jack stand, it, uh, it sounded like someone wringing out a sponge. It was really, really bad. And it wasn't stable and the machine fell off, so, you know, we now have a 6,000 pound machine not on wheels stuck in the mud. That's really going to suck to rescue. Uh, but I've got the new tires. The last of the new tires came in. So we're going to get new tires put on these and then uh, shuffle the tires around so the good baler has new tires. Uh, since we're going to the tire place anyway, got to take this thing. Um, and I guess we'll do the front tire on the case machine as well. You can get in here, you can pop this cap out. Oh, that's disgusting. You can pop the cap out, then there's a grease fitting in there. Uh, as you can see, the cap broke or something? I don't know, I've never seen anything like that. It's supposed to have this little button in here, and that one's actually on the way out too. And as you can see, it's come apart, and uh, so this has been rained in, so we need to jack this up and pump more grease in and spin the tire and work it around. And uh, yeah, then we'll get this thing out of here. It's really not that big of a deal, um, you know, I was able to buy some of these replacement caps for like, I don't know, a dollar a piece or less, and I even got some of these grease seals, I was going to repack all the, uh, the wheels, but like I said, he needs the trailer today, so we really don't have time. I guess first things first, we gotta fire up the tractor, get a trailer mover on the back of it, and move this gooseneck out of the way. Ah, uh, new equipment, they say it won't last as long as the older stuff, there's a lot to be said. For just being able to hop in, turn the key, and go. Wait for the glow plug light. Cool. I'll give that a moment to warm up. I gotta go pull the locks off of the wheels on this stuff. So in today's episode, if everything is way more complicated than it needs to be, I'll be ranting about how the holes they drilled on the back of this tractor are the wrong size and it doesn't really work with the type of implements I was told it would. So th there's different categories of size three-point hitch-wise. This is supposed to be a category two hitch, which to be fair it is, like that's what the balls in the bottom of this thing are. And if you use Kubota's top link, you can use their category two top link on it. But literally everything else I've ever, without exception, I've ever hooked to this thing, top link wise, including this over here. I'll show you what you have to do with it. See how tight the front of this is to the back of this bracket? There's a uh, 16th, 16th of an inch in there, like not even an eighth of an inch of play. And that's with Kubota's specialty top link. If you use a standard one or anything that hooks to the top link of an implement, you can see this, I've had to grind this down so it'll actually fit on the tractor. And even with this, it's really, really close. And then the other thing is, anytime I've moved any of these pins, these holes need to be like a solid 30, 40 thousandths of an inch larger. I mean, I don't want to sit here and play keyboard commando, but literally every single time I've ever taken anything on or off there, I'll show you. I have to get a hammer and a chisel and force these pins through because the stinking holes are way, way too small. 
Really what I need to do is get a die grinder and like wall of these out. All right, so now we gotta move this trailer out of the way so I can get the truck back in here and, uh, and grab that dump trailer. All right. How many horsepower does it take to move a trailer? I don't know, but I know how many I'm gonna use. So this is kind of like an expensive version of bobbing for apples here. I love that hydraulic shuttle. This is kind of like an expensive version of bobbing for apples because I got to shove that ball up underneath this hitch. So I got to pull that lever at just the right time. Mm, a little more. It's not so bad if you can just have one hand on the hitch controls, but uh, I got to film. I better shut this. That's a little close for comfort. Okay. Man, this thing really doesn't even know that's back there. I'm sure it'd feel it if we got like going fast down the road or something. But this is that's like a 64, 6500 pound trailer. That's what's nice about having a larger tractor like this. Okay, where am I gonna put this? I'm just gonna back it up against the front of the shop. Clutch little shifting, it never gets boring. All right. Ah, shoot, that tongue is in the way. I can't really see anything. Oh well, I hope I don't hit anything expensive. I think we're pretty good, lights are working. Um, yeah, I guess I'm just gonna shoot some grease into this and spin the wheel to work it around. As I look at the rest of these, these caps aren't looking 100% either. I think probably what I did when I got this thing, I didn't really understand how the bearings in these are set up, so I think I over-greased them. You know, totally my fault. And I think that's what's causing these to pop out. It doesn't really damage anything, but it means I really have to do what I want to do anyway now that this is broken in, pull off these wheels and like completely clean up and repack the bearings and stick it back together. Uh, but we do not have time for that today. Also, Mechanic Steve was over here. This thing actually has a transmission in it. And uh, now I just gotta wait for the last of the parts I ordered to show up. And then we can complete it. And it'll be out of the shop finally. Only took a year-ish. Yeah, man, flow jack skills. Oh, I gotta clean up everything in here. I mean, this is a disaster. Everything from doing the clutch and putting LEDs on the trailer and bringing home the baler. All these tools are still all over the place. Been a little too busy for my own good, but it sure beats the opposite, not having any work to do. Oh man, this is one heavy pig. I don't know exactly what this thing weighs. I don't want to speculate off the top of my head. I think it's a good five, 6,000 pounds because the bed, it's a 3 16 plate. So it's fairly heavy duty. And the last time we used this thing, Mechanic Steve was with me. I'm pretty sure that was the day we hauled home probably at least 10,000 pounds of steel plate drops in this. This is the thing, you know, you don't need a um, you know a large dump trailer like this. This is a 16 footer, I think. I paid more for that than the 14 foot, which I think is the usual one. You don't need stuff like this every day, but I saved a good bit of money buying all those drops as opposed to buying like sheets of, of quarter inch plate. And uh, let's see, I sold my dump truck to buy this, so just having this instead of the dump truck, you know, and pulling it with my pickup saves like a good thousand dollars a year in insurance or whatever it was. And now that I have it, I can make. Uh, hauling these steel chips for uh, basically free so I can't really complain. Don't know how long the steel is gonna last though because 
once a shop produces so much scrap metal you can get one of those dumpsters provided by like the local scrap metal companies but another friend of mine told me at least the one he talked to they want I think 12,000 pounds of metal per month minimum and my buddy the machinist doesn't produce that yet <laughs> so for now I'm really thankful to have this opportunity it's one of those deals where uh, there really isn't a downside he gets rid of this stuff he doesn't have to do anything with it he doesn't have a trailer like this he doesn't have to buy one or lease one just so it can sit there for a month or two until it fills up and uh, I would kind of prefer to have something like this here to be able to use for my own scrap metal but you know I got other trailers so it'll be fine let's uh, hit the road Alright, dropped off the trailer and that will be a uh, pretty comfy little side income here in probably, I'm guessing, one to two months before they actually fill the thing completely up. Alright, alright, uh, let's see, battery powered impact should be somewhere on the floor. <laughs> oh boy, ah, uh, where the heck could this thing have gone? Oh, of all the times not to be able to find stuff. You know, part of me wishes I'd come out here and actually clean the shop this morning like I was going to, but when the phone rings and there's stuff you gotta do, oh, there's just not that much else you can do. Nah, it's cool. I got all day to do this. All right, let's see. Got camera. I'm just gonna shove some sockets in my pocket. Hey, that rhymes. If I was nine, I'd find that extremely amusing. Except I'm not. And I still do. All right. Okay, here we go. This ride starts now. I just gotta get out of my combination death trap slash workshop. Oh, these are some nasty looking lugs on here. I don't think these have moved in a while. This might be a bigger battle than I was expecting. Yeah, this isn't gonna work. I just can't get this jack to work between these uh, steering linkages. And I, my shorter floor jack isn't gonna reach up this tall and my larger one is stuck underneath the round baler. So this is just gonna have to wait. But I think we can get the uh, tire off the, off the mower though. All right, got both tires off the baler. Got new tires for it. And my pull behind shredder, that's the wheel that came on it. Got a new tire. I just don't have the uh, the floor jack to grab it. And uh, it doesn't really need to be done right now anyway. So, tire shop. Here we come. All right, so I got out there. Uh, the place is open till six, so they would have had time to do them. However, there is literally a line of people waiting to get work on their tires done. So he's like, yeah, I'm not gonna have time to do this today, uh, but if you leave these wheels and tires here, I'll do them first thing in the morning. And I thought for a second, I was like, man, I'm not leaving this stuff <laughs> like out in your driveway. Uh, I don't think tweakers really run off with implement tires, but you know, people who've never worked on farm equipment don't understand how expensive everything is. Those Baylor tires are almost $400, and that uh, mower tire, that was pretty cheap. I think that was like 50, 60 bucks, plus the wheels. If I lose those rims and I buy new ones like from the dealer, that's probably gonna be a good couple hundred bucks a piece with shipping. So uh, yeah, I don't wanna mess with that. I thought for a second, I was like, man, I would, but I tell you what, I got some other tires I want to bring too. This will give me a chance to get them pulled, and uh, and I guess I'll just drive back over there first thing in the morning. All right, I found a random wooden thing. I don't even know where this came from. It's just been <laughs> just been outside my shop for like a year. Mm. Ah. 
All right, that ought to work. All right, to the case. All right, so, um, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take this front steering linkage off. Is it excessive? Yes, should you have to do this to change a tire? Uh, no, but the reality is you can see this is really bent and it needs to be straightened anyway And this is really the only way we can get this wheel off right now since like I said we have to do this anyway uh, I guess there's not that much you about to do it. I hope this stuff isn't too crazy rusted We got some bailing wire in the castle nut here, of course All right, this is either gonna be really really easy or really really difficult Not a lot of in-between them Stuff like this. Oh boy. Oh, hey, how about that? Oh, I love living in Texas. I love how not everything is covered in 50 years of rust. Okay, you know what? We're gonna... Yeah, we'll set that like that. Oh my goodness, I'm starting to like this tractor. I did mangle these castle nuts a little bit. Uh, there's probably a superior way to do this, but I don't think I know what it is. Man, this press, having a good hydraulic press is a lot like having that dump trailer. You don't need it every day, but when you do, it's pretty much the only thing that'll do this. Hmm. We'll start with the smaller bend up here. times better we've gone from a bend of about four inches in this span to maybe a quarter inch left I could sit here and chase that last quarter inch all night if I wanted to but there's no guarantees that I could actually get it all that much closer because I'm not really uh, you know I don't claim to be a hydraulic press expert oh but uh, yeah, that's a huge, huge, huge improvement. All right, I'm actually just gonna leave that here. We're not gonna put this back on the tractor until the new tire is on it, because that's how I do everything. No, uh, <laughs> because otherwise, if we do, we're gonna have to work with this whole uh, half of the front axle supported by this jack, and I don't know how much I really trust that thing, so I don't wanna be working around it all that much. Um, yeah, let's take that off of there. Now remember, kids, we gotta bust these lug nuts loose. Uh, before we take the weight off of this wheel, uh oh, that one is loose. That's why with old tractors, oh, or with anything you buy use, you really can't assume anything. Anyway, yeah, if the wheel's still on the ground and we loosen the, most of you guys know this, but still, then the wheel can't turn. If it was lifted up, I'd have to keep it from rolling with this hand. Man, you don't appreciate having an electric impact. So you have to go with that one. Oh well, it's gotta be around here somewhere. It's probably in my truck. Do not want to knock this jack over. Oh no. Oh boy. This is gonna be one of those. Oh, I forgot one. You gotta be kidding me. Epic fail. All right, well, at least now the rim is loose. I cannot believe I did that. Yeah, it's about time to call it a day. Maybe I need to be the one watching instead of making the motivational rants. <sighs> hey, this is good though, because I was for real convinced I'd lost one of these. It's like, how's that even possible? All right, I hope I don't come out here in the morning and find that this jack let loose and there's a dead goat under the tractor. But we got the wheel. Is that what I think it is? Nah. 
Those bearings could use some adjustment. I thought I saw that rock like a solid quarter inch. Glad that was just my imagination. Man, it sucks that uh, somebody let this tire sit without air in it and it's split because other than that, it's a perfectly fine old tractor tire. But we got that. We got a shiny new replacement here. The Crop Max, yeah. All right, uh, so yeah, I got that. Man, this is a lot of tires in this truck. Glad I bought the long bed. <laughs> yeah, new Baylor tire. Other new Baylor tire, Baylor wheels, shredder wheel, and the wheel off the case. For whatever it's worth, thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more. If you guys actually like this video, and if like enough people watch it, I'll consider making more of these kind of day in the life vlogs or whatever. But I hope you guys have a great evening. Thanks for watching.